what's up guys so I just finished my first redfish tournament I'm actually going in weigh-in right now we had a or I had a really good day of uh, red fishing my partner Dwayne which is a guy that uh, you know when you go kayak fishing you don't go alone you always go with someone so me and him went out there and um, Dwayne had a really good day on the trout and flounder so hopefully he gets a side pot on that me I caught a bunch of flounder but they weren't any size Dwayne has like a 20 inch flounder guys so I think he he might have a shoe in to win that uh, I think I have about I say 15 pounds of reds, so that might be enough to uh, might be enough to to place. I don't think I'm gonna win. These guys have got some real hammers out there, so hopefully we place. You know, first time, so I mean it was fun, and I did it a way that I don't usually fish. I went back up in the marsh and instead of jigging like the deep channels and whatnot, I went shallow guys. I mean, I went dirt shallow. I went way back up in like every canal, every little thing I could find. And they were in like a foot of water, you know. I never do that and I couldn't see them. So the water was really dirty in the morning. And all I did was run around with a uh, Texas Roach Deadly Dudley, and golly, I threw that on a like spinner. Golly, they were smoking it, guys. My first bite, I think, was like an eight pounder. If I landed him, I would have definitely placed in the tournament. But I ended the day with a uh, 27 and a half eight pound red and a 25 and a half six pounder. So, hopefully we place. It was kind of tough condition, so I'm kind of hoping everyone else skunked. <laughs> so I take home the pot. But knowing everyone from around here, Galveston and Matagorda, they probably have like 20 pounds, and I don't even get in top 10. But hopefully we place. Hopefully. But yeah, if you guys want to just talk, let's talk. Let's talk fishing. Let's talk fishing. Basically, the conditions I fished was, golly, this morning, guys, it was blowing a gale. You wouldn't believe how windy it was. It was like 100 mile an hour wind. You couldn't even stand up in the kayak. But uh, we grinded it out and uh, had a good time. What I do, I never understood why redfish guys use such heavy rods until I hooked those reds in a uh, shallow area. Dumb suckers run for days, boys. And I was using like 40 pound braid with a 20 pound mono leader on like a medium light. I need to go to Sarge and get him to make me a medium heavy action rod to sling them suckers. Cause golly, I was so nervous that them suckers would just either come off or break me off. But it was a fun time. It was a fun time. Live and you learn. I do learn that I need... What's up, Polestar? How you doing, man? I did learn that I need a bigger cooler. Because in the tournament that I fish, you get a half a pound bonus for live fish. And when I'm tournament fishing, I really don't like to keep the fish. Unfortunately, my big red fish did die. But you only get live fish bonus for uh, one fish. So, my one fish is still alive in there, so we will get the bonus. But I do need a bigger cooler. I have like a 55 quart uh, cooler. I honestly need like a like a 60, 65. Something to put in the back because I run an aerator through it, and the only reason that redfish died is because he didn't have room to like move around. He was cramped on top of one another. Lucky I didn't get two like 28 because I don't think I'll be able to fit both of them in there but it was fun just going to weigh in now have chill out enjoy the drive talk to you guys 
I enjoyed it though. Now I know why people do this, cause man, that brush of a first bite and the fight, guys, I my heart was beating out of my chest. I couldn't like, I was shaking when I netted the fish. And then when I finally caught the limit, I was like, oh my God, just a weight fell off my shoulders. So you guys let me know, should I do more of these tournaments? Like, I honestly am, am enjoying them, you know? It's a fun little thing, you know, to add a little competition to it. You know, not just to go fishing, just to fish. You actually have a little competition. It's pretty fun. Pretty fun. But I can understand why this is so stressed out. The tournament works. You get two redfish between 20 and 28 inches. They do heaviest combo. And you get a half a pound live fish bonus if it's alive when you bring it there. And they also have like side pods for one heavy trout, one heavy flounder, and a slam weight. I didn't get a slam. I wish I did. I caught a ton of flounder, but I could not get the big one. Now my buddy Dwayne, on the other hand, he might clean up on side pot because uh, he has a stud trout and a stud flounder. He could not get the red. Guys, he caught like five or six of them that were like 19, 19 and a half. It was crazy. But those trout and flounder were schooling today, big time. Jesus. We were fishing around the Keith Lake Cut and man, guys, if you're ever in the Keith Lake Cut, do not blow through that place. Idle down, do not throw a wake. It's not cool. We were on a great trout bite. I mean, the trout were coming up, popping out the water. I had one literally backflip out the water to chase a shrimp. And then old boy comes running through 2,500, throws the biggest wake and breaks up the school. You know, it'll help you and the other fishermen around you if you just slow down. It doesn't take but five minutes, you know, to slow down, slow down. But man, it was a great day. I loved it. We, we've been up since first cast was at six. So we've been up quite a while. <laughs> my, uh, my woman is not going to be too pleased unless I bring home a check. <laughs> but it was a good time. But the bait today, the number one bait for today was a Texas Roach. Deadly Dudley on a, I think it's a number four H&H &H spinner. For some reason, they only wanted the Texas Roach, guys. Me and Dwayne both found that out. He was only catching his fish on Texas Roach, and same, same as me. But with all the boat traffic, you had to work it slow. And I mean at a crawl. And the Reds and the Marsh were smoking it. I mean, like, hammering it. But once you got in the channel... I'm from Beaumont, Texas, it's near Houston, if any of y'all know where that is. <laughs> yeah, we have great fishing down here. It's honestly, I'd rather not live anywhere else. Well, take that back. I can live in Louisiana where you drive five miles and catch yellowfin tuna. What up, man? How you doing? Just taking this long drive. The only bad part about this thing, it's uh, two hours to wait. <laughs> so I got a bit of drive ahead of me. I really want to go down to Corpus. I heard the trout fishing, that's where you catch some hammer trout. I've, my goal is to go down there or go to Matagorda and go smoke some big trout. If I catch a 10 pound trout, boys, you know it's going on the wall. I'm not gonna kill it, but it's going to definitely gonna get a mount done. Try to convince my lady to put it up in the living room. I'm actually supposed to go down to, I think it's the Freeport area. 
think Freeport's around. Is Freeport around, Corpus? I'm not sure. I don't venture out of my, uh, my little area that much. What's up, Kyle? Yeah, I fish everything, boys. I will, I fish tuna, from tuna to crappie, everything. If it pulls a line, I'm gonna go try to catch it. I don't, I'm not a snob when it comes to fish. Man, if it pulling the line, that's a fun time, you know? It's not always about just going after those trout or whatever you want. Freeport is near Galveston. See, the thing with me is, I don't like driving. I don't. And Corpus from Sabine is about a five hour drive. So, uh, uh, I'm not too happy about that. <laughs> now, if I stayed down there like a couple days, I could do it. I could do it. Get like a little, little cabin down there. But with coronavirus going around, I am not socializing that much. You can't tell I'm not very much of a people person. That's why I go fishing a lot. Solitude. But yeah, it was a fun time, guys. I'm definitely gonna film more videos back in that marsh. It was so beautiful and deep. I could not believe how deep that marsh was. You know, you look at a marsh and you, you expect it like maybe a foot. No, guys, I was in like two and a half, three foot of water. I wouldn't drive for a 25 pound limited trout. I drive for a 10 pound trout. <laughs> Cause we, down here in Sabine, you can catch a 25 pound limited trout easy. Cause we have a, uh, our jetties for some reason hold some monster trout. A big trout for us is like an eight pounder. You know, that's, that's equivalent to like a 10 down in Corpus. And I've caught a handful I think my biggest is like eight two but i want to wade fish with my sarge with the fat boy and get a smoked the wind in the marsh was bad it was bad i couldn't even we, well i could stand up because i'm in the pro angler but that wind was howling I guarantee you the audio on the GoPro is not that good this this episode, guys. I guarantee you that. But you gotta grind it out. It was tournament day and I was only looking for two bites. I got I landed one, but I did not land the other big bite I had. But I mean, I came out with a 27 and a half and a 25 and a half. So, I mean, you can't complain. But I can't complain how I just won a big old bag of fish. I think, what do you guys think? You think 16 pounds would win a tournament? For a two, for a two man, for a two fish limit of redfish, what is like, a guarantee you top 10 weight guys because this is my first redfish so I, I don't know I don't follow these things I know you get your 10 pound redfish that's a money fish anything else you catch is just icing on the cake any redfish pros in here Now I'm telling you boys, watch. Someone's gonna come out with like 20 pounds. These boys from like Freeport, Corpus is like, they're hammers. I don't think I'm gonna win it. Hopefully I play place top 10, maybe top five. I like to place top three, cut a little bit of a check. Uh, I'm going to Sunset Lounge in San Leon. It's a little bit of a drive, but it's a nice little area. Um, I, it's called the Saltwater Survival Series, 
And I have three more tournaments that, oh, I have two more tournaments after this one. We have a redfish series, a flounder series, and a trout series. I'm hoping on the trout series, I catch some bigger trout. <laughs> Man, if I had that stringer, guys, if you guys watched one of my latest videos where I only catch jumbos, Man, if I had that stringer, golly, I think I would have blown the whole gosh darn place out the water. But watch, when I go try to catch... And when I try to catch redfish, I'll probably catch flounder. Because that one trout I caught weighed four pounds. Almost five. So, I mean, a, f a five... A five fish limit of that, oh man, you blow everyone out the water. Saying that, knowing me, I'll get beat by like 25 pounds. Oh guys, I still have um, I still have a bunch of these DD fish. Yeah, I think we're doing a special. We're gonna do two for 50, one for 30. So, if you guys want one, pick them up. Pick them up. They're bad ass, okay? They're bad, I love them. They're so soft, so soft. And they don't, they don't stain that much. You know how you get blood and stuff on your shirt and it stains? This one, for some reason, it doesn't. I don't know why. And it helps sponsor the channel. It costs a little money to go film these videos for y'all. Y'all are spoiled. Because I'm starting to upload like every two or three days. <laughs> it's so much work, but I love doing it. It's so much fun. If you guys buy enough shirts, I can hire a driver to drive me around. And then I'll definitely go to Matagorda. The only thing I can tell you is get there before the crowd does, guys. If you're going fishing tomorrow, get there. So when I when we got out there this morning, it was like 5:30, okay. And then we loaded all our stuff up, and by that time it was six. The sun was cracking out, and that bite—it's summertime right now, guys. So if any of you guys know, the bite don't last that long. You know, once that sun gets up, you, it, it's a hard thing to make them bite again. I mean, I caught, guys, you couldn't believe, I caught like 12 redfish and I kept throwing them. I, I kept throwing them back because they're all the same size, 22, 23. I mean, I had four or five pounders and just keep throwing them back, throwing them back, throwing them back. I could not find another 27 or 28. They really need to hold redfish tournaments in the winter. Shoot, winter redfish are fat. You see some heavy weights there. Summertime, not so much. They're all skinny. Skinny, skinny, skinny. And you guys need to register for the star tournament, okay? Do not go out there fishing, catch you a tagged red, and not be in the star tournament. Every year I, I, I answer, I've never caught a tagged red, but I'll tell you guys what, a little hidden secret is the beam. Every year, so CCA has specific species and for each uh, coast. For some reason, Old Sabine, Gaff Top always comes out of Old Sabine. Sabine is known for world class Gaff Top, guys. So if you really want to put a good chance of catching you know something to win the tournament I'm not I'm not shooting anything down but I'm just saying I might do a series where I go try to catch a 10 pound gaff top because that's I think that's like a $5,000 tackle package shoot I'll catch a darn gaff top for $5,000 and not be ashamed about it
You know, that's a good idea. I might do that. Oh, so I'm coming up with ideas for new videos, guys. Do you guys want to see me catch a monster gar out of the kayak? Like a monster. If you, any of you guys fish around Sabine, you know we have some alligators. Some straight monster gar that roll around here all the time. I think that'd be pretty fun. Just have a couple of the big rods out and chilling and get towed around by an old big. <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. Catch like a catch like a uh, 14 footer bigger than my kayak. <laughs> God, can you guys imagine a 14 foot gar? Jesus Christ, that thing would probably weigh like what 300 pounds. Jesus, be a certified alligator. Be fun to just uh throw a bunch of trot not trot lines uh throw a couple jug lines <laughs> and go chase them around the kayak and just mess with those gar. Yeah, I had the same thing happen today. I was fishing that spinner bait, guys. I stopped it at the boat. I could see the whole spinner bait, and out of nowhere, old big old gar just grabs it. And that was the only thing I get fish to bite on today, so I did not want to lose it because I broke one off and I only had two. So that was my last one. I was, boy, I was shaking that rod. I was like, you better spit it. You better spit it. And I mean, he had it, like, down. I don't know how I got the hook out of that. How he didn't break me off. But that was really the first success I've had with a spinnerbait. Never really fished them that much. I guess because I really don't target reds that often. But I think that's going to change, guys, because that's shallow water red fishing. That is fun. God, dog, you guys don't understand. I have video. This guy was just burning my drag. You can't do anything about it. You can't stop them. They got nowhere to go. It's literally like a foot deep. So you just see him burning your drag. Salt Strong Slam Shady? No, I have not heard of that tournament. I really don't fish tournaments that often because uh, I feel like they're really, really competitive and, you know, me being a YouTuber, sometimes people get all mad that I, I um, film, you know? I mean, it's my job, you know? It's what I do. The lure. No, I haven't. Um, I really don't fish any other plastics other than Deadly Dudley. I swear by Deadly Dudley, guys. I have 100% no, no other plastics are in my kayak other than gold. And that's only really for flounder during the run. Any other time, I'm always throwing to Deadly Dudley. And if you guys are looking for Deadly Dudleys, we have them at County Home and Ranch in Port Arthur now. The full lineup, it's crazy. Those things are bad, 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 man. You put them on a death grip jig head, literally you can use one lure all day until the tail gets ripped off or something. It will not tear at the nose, nothing. It's ridiculous. Salt and pepper, baby. You gotta salt and pepper them before you put them in the box. That's honestly one of my favorite colors because in dirty water it looks good, in clean water it looks fantastic. Death grip jig heads is what I've been using and I guys, I will never go back. The hook is so stout but it's needle sharp and the grips on it is crazy. If you guys look at them, you see how many like teeth they have on them and that sucker, you put a plastic on there, it ain't coming off. You better really like the plastic you put on there because you, you, you're going to be using it all day. You try to take it off, basically rip up the plastic. But a lot of you I know are trout fishermen. Yeah, you got to order them online. I don't think anywhere local here has them. If 
if any of you are, I know a lot of you are trout fishermen, you know how trout are. Man, you get under some birds or get on a good bite, you'll go through two or three bags of plastics because they just tear them up off the jig heads. Not with the death grip. You put a decent plastic on that sucker, it ain't coming off. I've had, so I fish a shrimp creole color deli deli under a cork. And I've had to change the lure out because it looks tobacco stained. Just because it's been there for so long. Yeah, you put it on a down south with like a uh, eighth ounce or even a quarter, whatever you use, that sucker ain't coming off, dude. It ain't coming off. The only thing you'll have to change is because the tail gets ripped off or something. Um, offshore has been put on hold for a little bit just because of the wind. And there's really not much we can go out there and catch right now. So it's not worth us pumping up and burning all that gas. Because snapper's not open. We can only catch state snapper. And with the water being dirty, they're hardly there. But uh, snapper season opens up June 1st. And we have like 60 days. So be expecting a lot of red snapper videos. And around that time, everything kicks off. King, Cobia. Hell, we might even try to go out and catch some grouper. My dad's really been on this fix where he wants to go out there and catch a grouper. So, that'd be fun. I really want to try to get into uh, diving. Like spear fishing, guys. That'd be pretty cool. cool. We know a couple of reefs that are in about 50, 60 foot of water. About 50 60 foot of water and uh it'd be awesome to get get down there and just just see the fish guys you don't understand how many red snapper out there for some reason i don't know why wildlife and fisheries thinks they're in danger those darn suckers are so thick you can't fish for anything else like when we chum guys we anchor the boat we start chumming we're trying to bring up like mangroves lane snapper and all, um, some other stuff it looks like the red brick road down behind you. Just you can pick which one you want. Literally, you just like, oh, that's a small one. I don't want that one. It's it's ridiculous. There's by the thousands of them. You throw a piece of cut bait down there. It takes you but five seconds and you're bit. It's ridiculous. I really wish they would open snapper season all year long. You know, because it. It puts a damper on us. Uh, it puts a damper on us offshore guys, you know. There's no point in us going out there. Nothing to catch. And Amberjack, God dog, you want to catch Amberjack, you got to go 100 miles out there. That's about a four hour drive. You know, one way. For one fish. You only get one per person. They really need to open Amberjack and Red Snapper at the same time. You know, just, just so everyone has a chance to go out there and get something. And whoever's doing research, you need to do more research. Because they are not endangered. Because I remember when the limit was four. Them darn suckers are taking over. But I am ready to go and catch some monster fish, guys. I'm not sure if you guys seen it. I'm gonna do a video where I go over all my tackle. Uh, I'll do my one series where it's inshore rods, and the next I'll do a uh, offshore. Offshore series, because guys, I don't think I've ever shown a picture of my fishing room. Uh, we probably have about hundred thousand dollars worth of gear in that darn room that's been there if you guys want to blame anyone for my addiction blame my dad my dad used to take here's a story before I could walk my dad would throw me in a baby chair 
strap me to the deck of the boat, throw a rod in my hand, and tie the rod to my baby chair. I was catching five pound trout before I could even stand. He has a, a picture of me holding a big old trout on my little ugly stick just like this. The rod's bent over like a U. It's so freaking crazy. But, I mean, it was a fun, that's, that's how I got into it, you know. We were just out there fishing, you know, not necessarily going after trout or whatever. Shoot, the funnest times I've had, my dad's catching croaker. Hey, guys, do not know. I don't want to hear no trash talk in the, in the chat. Croaker are delicious. You get like a 12, 12 inch croaker, that's just as good as a crappie. White, flaky meat, it is delicious. Delicious. And you catch them so easy. When they're running, you drop two shrimp down on a drop rig, pulling up two giant croaker. And sometimes they'll pull a drag. You get two of them, they'll pull some drag. It's pretty fun. Just bail them in the boat. And they're good bait. You know, we, we sometimes we freeze, uh, we catch some smalls, we'll freeze them and use them for, uh, Uh, freeze them and use them for offshore bait. Sheephead, don't get me started on sheephead. Shoot, just as good as any other fish. It's just like a drum. It tastes just like a redfish. It's not hard to clean. Just don't go through the rib bones. Go above them or use an electric knife. Shoot, we used to catch sheephead by the by the thousands, man. You go out winter time, guys. Winter time. If you guys don't really want to go chase those trout and you know just want to have some fun. Go to the jetties, buy you a couple quarts, of, a couple, listen, a couple quarts of shrimp. Popping cork or a egg weight and a hook. It's like snatching perch, okay? Literally, you throw in there and you just yank them out and they're big. That's what we used to do when I had my boat. Me and my buddies would go out and if you launch on Louisiana side, there's no limit on sheephead. The most we've ever caught in one day, guys, we bought $100 worth of shrimp, live shrimp, from my buddy uh, Fish and Hunt Jamal. We caught 125 of them darn things. Filled up two big igloos and then started throwing in my live well. We filled up both my live wells and it was just like, what are we gonna do with all this? Luckily, we're all Asian and have giant families and we just give them there because everyone wants some fish. If you guys want a thrill, you need to go to the jetties. Even right now, jetties have been on fire right now. Some good trout been out there. Well, all right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and weigh in now. I'll talk to you guys later. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Because you're going to want to not miss the next video coming up. Love each and every single one of y'all. Peace. How do I end this thing? How do I end this thing? I don't know how to end this thing. Okay, later, guys.